The story of the day, the offseason in full swing, commander still looking for a coach, and the man who many wanted, at least since yesterday when Ben Johnson announced he was going back to Detroit, is Mike McDonald. Unfortunately for Commanders fans, he is headed to Seattle. We are also headed to Seattle to talk to a Seahawks insider who gets to celebrate the hiring of Mike McDonald. That is my good friend Stacy Roast, 710 ESPN. Stacy, how are you? What kind of day was it uh, for you and your show up there compared to what the doom and gloom that we're experiencing here? Oh, no. I mean, you guys have lots of good stuff to look forward to, right? Number two pick. But, um, but yeah. Uh, Apparently really nothing so a head sorry. coach so wants. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, okay, so we were completely convinced, completely convinced, as I'm sure many people were uh, in Washington, that it was going to be like Ben Johnson, uh, maybe Quinn or, or someone to the commanders. And I think that the hope was Seattle would have its pick uh, with uh, with McDonald, um, you know, maybe if they wanted to look at Kafka, which I don't know how many people here were excited about that, understandably, given the offensive numbers. But people loved Mike McDonald here. Like, they were so sold on the idea and you have to consider we're in a division where you look at the NFC West coaches and you see Sean McVay uh, and Kyle Shanahan and you go, where's our version of that? So I feel like Seattle is pretty convinced they found their version, the defensive version. But finally, you've got someone who is really, really innovative. He'll have his own obstacles as a 36-year-old, but people here are so excited. Yeah, I bet. I would be very – he was the guy that I wanted once Johnson pulled his name out. I'm curious yesterday uh, – because a lot of people obviously were connecting the dots of Washington, Johnson. and I right. feel like it just became this echo chamber that enough people were saying, well, I don't really know anything, but I think it's Johnson and Washington that people just assumed that it really was going to happen, even though everyone was just talking to each other with no information. But when <laughs> Johnson pulls out of both Seattle and D.C., did you guys think that there was a like the chance that McDonald was going to go here and like all of a sudden big gulp? Oh mm-hmm. crap! The guy that was supposed to supposed to take the Washington job isn't, and now we are screwed. In other words, did you guys see like how did you see the Seahawks job versus the Commanders job? I think that the assumption has been uh, from the jump that Seattle would want a defensive guy. So uh, with Ben Johnson. Uh, you know, pulling his name. I think there were some people here that were hoping that it would be him and, and he could come here, but um, people were pretty set on, hey, is it going to be Quinn? Is it going to be McDonald? And I don't know how many people here assumed Washington would want a defensive guy. So I think the idea that Washington fans were really looking at McDonald was kind of lost on a lot of Seahawks fans, right? They're all assuming, well, God, Washington's going to have their quarterback at number two. Um, they're just going to want an offensive guy because that's where so much of the league goes. That I really think the idea here was that while the idea of going you know, for a 36-year-old rookie head coach felt like a long shot and that it was so different, the idea would always be that defensive coaches would be less desired and maybe there would be more options for Seattle. So I really do think Seahawks fans – um, maybe weren't panicking as much when Johnson pulled out and, and weren't also aware of how far things might have been getting with McDonald in Washington. Stacy Roast, uh, Seahawks insider and, and host up at 710 ESPN in Seattle with us here on the Hoffman Show. Um, as far as McDonald goes there, there's the, the weird press conference when Pete is uh, – dismissed i don't know what the right word is even Mm -hmm. up there where it's like yeah fired dismissed reassigned uh senior advisor uh whatever that is supposed to mean like do you actually think pete will be around and can be a help to mcdonald or is pete being a good soldier until he's gonna be like all right whatever money left on my contract make sure that gets in my bank account see y'all later yeah, I mean, I don't know about for a money point of view, but I think it's being a good soldier until you can find a coaching opportunity. Like, I think that um, Pete Carroll is someone who did not want to stop coaching and does not want to stop coaching. And I think that he has so many ties to this area. Uh, and there are, you know, he knows these players, he knows their families, um, he knows this organization and does have a loyalty to them. And so I think it was very much like a, how do we move on from and fire this person who brought this team its only Super Bowl respectfully? Um, but I don't think that neither the team nor Pete expects this to be a long lasting partnership in terms of this advisory role. Um, people were wondering here whether or not Pete would take that Chargers job. Everyone thought it would go to Harbaugh. Um, but I know that Rabel and, and Pete Carroll kind of had their names as long shots. I would fully anticipate that, that obviously not this cycle, but that Pete eventually tries to look for some coaching opportunities elsewhere because he is just nonstop go all the time. And I don't see this advisory role being something, even with a younger coach, that he's super comfortable with. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I also think Pete is about to make a lot of money as a consultant over the next 12 months. That too. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think people realize, like, unless you know old coaches or players, like, a lot of these guys make a ton of money consulting, yeah. and, and certainly Pete's going to pop up at random training camps or whatever uh, over the next practices, over the next 12 months, and then we'll see if he's in the hiring cycle next year. Um, obviously, Dan Quinn is a known commodity up there. Why do you think the Seahawks decided to go McDonald over Quinn? You know, I fully expected them to go Quinn initially, but um, I I don't know that the Cowboys' lasting impression was a reason, per se, that the Seahawks didn't. Uh, The Seahawks know Dan Quinn. They respect Dan Quinn. There's a good, healthy relationship there. I think that that turned off fans more than it did actual people with the organization. But I think that we haven't seen a lot of John Schneider's solo decision-making. He has so often been tied to Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll having a ton of power within the organization, that we're so used to thinking of the Seahawks as a team that goes with familiarity and a team that goes, um, you know, with some old school stuff. Well, wait a minute, that's Pete Carroll. John Schneider isn't afraid to take some swings. And so I think that the longer they went not hiring Dan Quinn, the more people were wondering, wait a minute, are we going to see the version of John Schneider that like traded for Jimmy Graham back in 2015 or, or that was willing to take a swing on Jamal Adams? Like, is there a bold version of a GM here that we just haven't seen? And might that bold GM be willing to take a shot with someone uh, that no Seahawks fan <laughs> would assume, uh, you know, would typically happen um, in a Pete Carroll type regime, which does go with people that you know. And so um, I think it sounds stupid to say, but like, It's not if Pete Carroll was still making the decision, but the way that we're all used to thinking under a Pete Carroll team, Dan Quinn was perfect, made perfect sense. We all assumed it would happen, Um, but it kind of took us all a minute to realize that that that's not the decision maker in the culture anymore. So we're still figuring out what what Seahawks decision makers want and look like. So this is this is kind of a fun twist for us. Yeah, definitely. Stacey Rose, Seahawks insider and host at 710 ESPN up in Seattle is with us. Uh, so I guess the, the like the million dollar question, multi-million dollar question now from the Washington side of it is, as we hear you say that about Quinn is like, if, if they hire, if the commanders wind up hiring Quinn, how excited should fans be if they know Quinn in Seattle and they chose McDonald anyway? Right. It's a really good question. I will tell, you know, commanders fans without, um, you know, being blunt, there were Seahawks fans that were really hoping the Seahawks would not go with Quinn. Um, however, for what it's worth, um, a couple of my colleagues, and all of whom are former players, really love Dan Quinn. They would have been absolutely fine with it, and they are really impressed with Quinn as a head coach and what he's able to do. Um, we had um, Lofa Tatupu, who we had on with us, and, you know, I said, hey, I love Mike McDonald. Who do you like? Um, And he preferred someone like Brable or Quinn. And so if you're a Commanders fan, you could look at it like this. The biggest obstacle ahead for for McDonald will be how do you build up a coaching network and bring in your coaches when you're a first-year head coach and you don't have those relationships? Like your coaches are going to be guys who were assistants, maybe pass game coordinators or quality control guys. When you're someone like Dan Quinn, that Rolodex is gigantic. And so there are a lot of resources that he can pull from. There is a lot of knowledge he has. And I know it's not the young, sexy pick, but he was so well-respected here. And, uh, and, and I, I think that Seahawks fans got distracted, as did I, by the shiny new object, and we're all very excited about it. I do think that there's still a lot to love about Dan Quinn. I agree. We had I do a podcast twice a week with uh, a guy who played for him in Atlanta, it just you can't find a guy who's played for him that has a bad thing to say. And that's not oh, always never, the nope. best best judge, but uh, it's better than a bunch of people being like, "Yeah, actually, that guy sucks and gives us no chance to win." So uh, <laughs> right. now we we right. wait with bated breath. Um, Stacy, always appreciate your insight. Thank you so much for joining us on, on some short notice here, uh, and especially after you did a full day of radio up there. Always appreciate you. And uh, are you be in Vegas next week for uh, for Super Bowl? I will not, unfortunately, be watching from home, and uh, I will outright say I'll be rooting for the Chiefs. I, I got to be honest with you guys. So sorry oh. about that. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't. I'm not offended by that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, not many people I'm running into are like rooting for the Chiefs. I guess, but I guess uh, I, th- I feel I, like I we, the Chiefs are reaching their villain era. This happens to oh, every dynasty. Sure. Like it is turning yep. uh, for all kinds of reasons that would take 
many, many hours to unpack, uh, and some of which would get me in a lot of trouble for crossing uh, and touching third rails uh, that we don't go to on Sports Talk Radio because we like keeping our jobs. Anyway, the point is, Stacey, uh, I won't see you in Las Vegas on Radio Row, but hopefully we'll run into each other down the line, and thank you as always for your time. Anytime. Bye. All right, that is Stacey Roast with us from 710 ESPN in Seattle. Um, so there it is, the scoop on uh, the scoop on Dan Quinn and, and kind of how Mike McDonald wound up there. And I think it, one of the most interesting things, frankly, she said there is, does like John Schneider become a very different GM without Pete Carroll putting the kibosh on some more bold moves? Because like some of the stuff that they've done over the years has worked and like the Jamal Adams thing has been a disaster for them. Not really anyone's fault. Uh, it's a lot of injury related, but still, um, that could be a very interesting thing to watch that that organization turn within a very tough division out there in the NFC West. Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.